January is a time of new beginnings, as we release ourselves from the joy and cheer of festivities and family, a self-seriousness takes form, setting off towards new paths hoping to accomplish much in the coming year. The spirit of change often gets undermined by its placement in the thick of the brutal, punishing months of winter. The warm reflection and comfort of the holidays gives way to the cold, isolating months of the season of man humbled by the severity of nature. It's the most dramatic season after all, one that throughout history has especially captivated the interest of Northern European artists who've experienced the full brunt of it. And there's been no better painting that depicts that all-encompassing endless force than the famous Hunters in the Snow by Peter Bruegel the Elder. Its astonishing composition represents the pinnacle of winter landscape painting. Its frigid expanse, one we're all too easily consumed by, represents nature at its most intimidating. To say that cold invades the entirety of the canvas would be an understatement. Our weary eyes find no escape in this environment. We're seized within its bitter grasp. From the hills and flatlands blanketed in snow, to the sloping rooftops of homes and inns, to the jagged mountains protruding from the backdrop, the trees are barren, their sharp twisting branches providing no comfort, just a place for stray birds to perch upon. And where there isn't the white of snow present in this scene, there's an icy, almost nauseating shade of blue-green that suffuses everything else, from the overcast, wintry sky, to the frigid river iced over by the cold. This staggering landscape tells a powerful enough story alone, but as is always the case, it's the people who give a canvas like this its long-lasting narratives. The scene features three hunters, leading a dozen or so dogs, returning from a seemingly failed hunting trip. We can't see their faces, but their body language reveals an overwhelming feeling of dejection and discouragement within the group. Nothing to show for their foray into the woods save a lowly fox pelt slung over one hunter's shoulder, and a bag far too small to fit reasonably sized game on another. They trudge through dense snow, following the haphazard footsteps of an even smaller animal. Various other people are dotted throughout the canvas as well, some stoking fires outside an inn while others play games on the ice. The composition is staggering, juxtaposing the variety of human life present with the formidable force of winter that surrounds them. Bruegel's use of scale and diagonal sightlines augments the vastness of the terrain, as our eyes move from the failed hunters, weary and dejected in the foreground, towards the rest of the miniature villagers, caught up in their silly games and frivolous concerns in the background. Unaware of this dark omen that the hunter's empty-handed return represents, that the coming winter promises to be even more brutal for all of them. This scene is one of many by Bruegel depicting the labors of the month, a genre series popularized in medieval and early Renaissance art, depicting rural peasant life and the various activities that took place during the different months. From the fruit and vegetable gathering and field toiling of a warm summer's harvest, to the formidable hunting expeditions typical of harsh northern European winters. In these and his many other works, we can't help but be taken aback by his incredible mastery of the form. His compositions are chaotic and enthralling, with various competing focal points, all vying for our direct gaze and attention, in his scenes brimming with intimacy and intricacy. And his sprawling, visually engrossing landscapes are rendered strikingly through their sheer scale, their magnitude. Before them, we're just as humbled by nature as his people are. Though really, the subject of his paintings isn't as much the landscape as it is the mass of humanity shown present within the landscape. The large population of rural peasant life, a subject rare to find focused on in Bruegel's time, living in harmony with both nature and each other. Depicted in the midst of their daily lives, from dutiful agricultural work, farming, hunting, and animal rearing, to the joy-filled, inebriated times of festivals, weddings, and recreational pursuits. Here, we gain critical insight into the depth of 16th century Belgian cultural life, its lively people at the center of it. This was a critical contrast from his Renaissance contemporaries of the time and of the previous century, far more concerned with depictions of religious piety and mythological themes. Their art depicted idealized, moralized, over-the-top subject matter, staged in visually harmonious compositions, 
focusing on heroic individuals and their feats of transcendent singular importance. In Bruegel's art, however, we see something far more experimental, a narrative complexity understood through that which is chaotic and unruly, a communion of souls depicted with reverence and respect through the simple act of recognizing their everyday lives as stories worth telling, a sympathy for the common lot of humanity. Even in Hunters in the Snow, a painting about the treacherousness of winter, his emphasis on community is ever-present. The winter depicted may be brutal, but it's far from an isolating one. The people in this composition weather through the storm of this difficult time. Outside a nearby inn, villagers stoke fires, roasting corn around one of the only sources of warmth in the canvas. Besides the hunters, the rest of the people featured here are tiny, far-off splotches of paint in the distance. Some do laborious tasks like logging logs and putting out chimney fires, but the vast majority play games on the ice, from skiing to curling to hockey. Even in the darkest times of the year, humanity is capable of finding comfort and enjoyment in one another. The harsh winters, as dismal as they were, were incapable of breaking the spirits of peasantry whose lives were affected the most by it. In Bruegel's time, people had more cause than just the weather to be weary over. As King Philip II of Spain took power in the region, the Duke of Alba, under his command, would lead brutal military assaults on Brussels and the growing Protestant rebellion. This might be why he eschewed the conventional religious iconography of his predecessors, as well as the mythical reverence emphasized by the Romantics. When he did, however, he used it to chilling effect in a piece like The Tower of Babel, a grand synthesis of the religious fracturing of his time between the Catholic Empire and the dissenting Protestant cultures of Bruegel's homeland. He was especially critical of the ceremonial pomp common in Catholic customs and traditions, or in Landscape with the Fall of Icarus, where the titular character is reduced to a single pair of legs drifting in the water, an afterthought not focused on in the canvas. This stark departure from typical mythological heroic depictions reveals Bruegel's greatest strength as an artist, the intense sympathy he has for a greater humanity. In a depiction about the gods, about mythos, Icarus's plight is rendered laughable in the face of, well, everything else, from the shepherds tending to their flock to the fishermen casting their nets. It's a piece that reminds us how all suffering and personal drama take place in the wider context of ongoing life. I think that's what makes The Hunters in the Snow so special to me. As winter invades every corner of the canvas, so too does humanity. In the punishing, bitter months of the year, life doesn't cease, it persists, because it has to. It's a piece not so much about the brutality of the season, but of human perseverance in the face of it. With 16th century rural existence completely oriented around the changing seasons, the many people depicted in Hunters in the Snow have found space for joy and celebration, even in the midst of perilous times. It's here we can reframe the narrative not as hunters broken under the weight of their own sorrow, forced to deliver foreboding news to the people below, but as our kinfolk, coming back from a weary hunt, welcomed into the joyous arms of their community. A recompense for the dismal day, there will be other hunts after all. In winters this unforgiving, we're reminded it's a time we need community the most, and the figures in Bruegel's paintings demonstrate a kind of resilience that, despite their ordinary status, remains wholly life-affirming. Imprisoned by winter, but embraced by our fellow man, transformed by the understanding that even the darkest days of all-consuming winter inevitably always yield to spring. Mind Theater is a solo effort produced and written by me, Aoaking Bade. For only $3 a month, you can support the show on Patreon. It really helps a lot. The link is in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.